and welcome to my channel. My name is Zoe, I'm age 53 and I'm a solo traveller. I've been very fortunate in the last 15 years to be able to travel mainly on my own through escorted tours and sometimes independent travel and I've been to many countries and I've had such a great time but I wasn't always confident at it. So let me tell you how it all started and how my passion for travel grew. So I used to work as a company lawyer and I got to travel internationally quite a lot, mainly to the USA and to Europe. And one day when I was on the flight, one of my flights, I opened up the airline brochure, like you do, and there was a two page spread in there advertising an escorted tour to Vietnam and Cambodia and it looked amazing. So I tore the two pages out of the magazine, put it into my handbag and I kept it there for two years. For two years I was asking people to come with me and nobody wanted to go. So in the end I plucked up the courage, phoned the number and I booked it and I paid, the, I paid it in full so that I couldn't change my mind. And that was it. I committed to going on holiday for the first time in my life on my own. Now I was in an escorted tour and you know there are a lot of benefits to that and I do think anyone that's nervous about traveling on their own, especially if you're a female and you're worried about safety, escorted tours they give you that safety. They also give you other people to travel with. So you're not on your own all the time. Now you can be on your own some of the time, but you know, you may have your own activities and you don't have to do the activities that they set. So actually it's a very good way of doing it. When I first went to Vietnam and Cambodia, when I got to the airport, I was terrified, absolutely petrified. You know, I didn't really know what to expect. I, what if people didn't like me? What if I didn't enjoy the tour? What if, what if, what if? But actually, it was amazing. It was such a great experience. And it was the best thing I ever did. I loved Vietnam. And I absolutely loved Cambodia. Cambodia did something to me. It I, you know, I became so much more of a humbler person, I think it's the best way to describe it. I was just in awe of the people, the history, the country, and that was it. I was hooked on travel. So I've been very fortunate, and I've been on many other trips, but both escorted and independent travel. I've seen many of many places in the world and uh, I've been very lucky and I've really enjoyed traveling and seeing all these different places. Now I am a fan of escorted tours. I do think that they are great if you're on your own or even in a couple and you're not confident in building your own itineraries or going to new places just being on your own is it's a great way to see things see the world in a nice safety bubble somebody else has organized everything they usually do see quite a lot in quite a short time but for me I was always getting their itinerary and then whenever there was a spare afternoon or hour in the morning I go find something else to do just to make sure that I can see as much as possible and I think for me I've outgrown escorted tours and I need a little bit more I need to be more immersed in a country and more connected with the people and the, the places that I go so I've been really drawn to this concept that they call slow travel where you go to different places and you stay for a month, three months and live there 
as a local. And so last year, I decided to give it a go. And I came to Antigua in the Caribbean for three months. I hired my own apartment and I, I still worked here because now I'm semi-retired. My son and I run the business together and my side of the business can be done anywhere. So I actually do do some work while I'm here. But I can do that. Um, as long as you've got Wi-Fi, you can be anywhere. And so I came to Antigua and I rented my own apartment. I rented a car and uh, went shopping in the supermarkets and, you know, just lived here. And it's wonderful. It's just a beautiful place to be. It's warm. And I come in the winter and it's so cold in the UK. So it's nice and warm. As I said, the people are very friendly here. The food is amazing. And you get to just live in a different country. I liked it so much. I'm actually back here now for my second year. And I'm here again for three months. And then I'll go back to the UK. So I have a new plan now. And that new plan is to sell everything I own in the UK. My house, my car, my belongings, my paramotor, my parachute, everything except for my travel memorabilia which I shall put into storage because one day I may settle somewhere and I'll want all that stuff back. But sofas, clothes, I can replace them. And I'm going to sell everything and I'm going to start traveling to different countries. And just as I do here in Antigua, I come for the 90 days permitted by a tourist visa and then I leave. I shall go to a countries on a tourist visa for as long as I'm allowed and then once my tourist visa expires, move on to the next place. So um, I'm excited. Um, you know, it's a new chapter in my life. It's definitely something I need to do. I, I'm not a little bit nervous about minimalization. Not that I'm worried about getting rid of everything, but the actual act of getting rid of everything. I have so much stuff. Um, but my plan is to hopefully sell my house and everything before the summer. In the summer, I have a two-month tour of Australia planned. It's um, a road trip that I've been planning myself for four years. It's very full-on, um, and I'm super excited for it. Obviously, I'll make sure I put all that, all those onto the uh, channel. And then when I get back in October, hopefully, I no longer have a home and I can then embark on my dream of travelling around the world. So I'd love to hear from anyone else who's doing it, done it, about to do it. I'd love to have some tips, where to go, best places to go, um, what they enjoyed most, where they got their medical insurance from. All those good little tidbits will come in handy. Please put them in the comments. And I'm really looking forward to getting back to Asia. And obviously, Vietnam is top of my list with Cambodia. Uh, can't wait to go back to Phnom Penh because I only got to spend one night there. And I know there's just so much more to see. So I'm super excited for that. But there's lots of other places I haven't been. I haven't been to Malaysia yet. I haven't been to South Korea, another place I really want to go to. Taiwan, oh, that just looks amazing. And then there's not just Asia, there's South America. Now, I've been to some places in South America, but there's a lot of places I haven't. And I really want to go to Buenos Aires. And uh, I've always wanted, it's actually on my bucket list to learn to tango in Buenos Aires. So I need to get that done. So I hope you'll follow me on my journey and keep giving me tips and advice and the things that uh, maybe I've forgotten about. Um, everything, all advice is more than welcome. 
So I'm going to put up on my channel some of the places I've been and my uh, reviews on the tours that I've been on. Um, also, I'm going to put up some reviews of places I've been independently. I'm going to also share my journey as I do the minimalization process and uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's not going to be fun. But once it's done, it's done. And I'll also obviously be putting up the Australia trip. Um, with the Australia trip, my brother's actually coming with me. And I tell you what, 15 years ago, nobody wanted to go on holiday with me. Now everybody wants to travel with me. But my brother's coming with me to Australia to A, share the drive-in, and B, because a lot of it is very remote, remote um, I just feel it would probably be safer to have someone that knows how to pump, pump a tire and change a wheel and all that good stuff to be with me. And two months, you know, he, he's good fun. The videos that we'll make, you'll enjoy. He's, uh, he's good fun to hang around with. And then obviously when I finish that, we will uh, be off on our slow travel journey. I'll also be putting up some videos of my stays in Antigua. Um, uh, what I do here, how I live here, how easy it is to live here. But in, in the Caribbean island, you know, you might not think that it is that easy, but it, it, it is. Um, it's also not, I mean, it's not cheap. You know, it's not cheap like Asia or anything like that, but it's not as expensive as you would imagine either. Obviously, it depends on how you want to live. I don't eat out every night. I usually cook for myself and I eat out once or twice a month and, you know, keeps, keeps it at a very reasonable cost. And beaches cost nothing. But I will do a video on that because I think that would be quite interesting and give you an insight into... Uh, what it would be like to live in the Caribbean. But thank you very much for watching. Um, I look forward to going on this journey with you all. And uh, like I say, any tips in the comments, please. And see you all soon. Thanks for watching. Ciao.